It's a pretty crazy storm out. I'm pretty glad that we're in a tent. It just ended up raining and raining and raining. What we're about to do right now is maybe a little bit stupid. I don't really know what possessed me to do this. I went out and fell through the ice. He's a crazy son of a bitch. Definitely shrinkage. <laughs> See that behind me? Right there? That's, that's the Mississippi River. It's pretty exciting to be in St. Louis. I really want to see this arch in person. Let's see if I can film the arch. Oh yeah, beauty. My name is Brian, and this is my best buddy. And his name is Brian too. Out of all the water in the world, only 1% is fresh water. It's all we got, and we want to explore all of it. So we've decided to start with a trip that's never been done before. A 4,000 mile journey from Milk River, Alberta, all the way down to New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh, and did I mention we're gonna do it in a canoe? We're crazy? You're right. We're the paddling brine. Making it to the confluence of the Missouri and Mississippi River is our greatest accomplishment to date. We're gonna make it dead or alive. We could fall in the river now and we could freeze, but no matter what, Mississippi runs to New Orleans and we're floating down it. We're on the Mississippi and now we know what they meant by big barges. I really don't know how this is recording. This is a big barge. Let me try and get us alongside this. These barges are unbelievable. I mean, we looked on Google Earth and, and we checked out uh, what kind of uh, shipping traffic we would see on the Mississippi River, but we never expected this. These, these, they're monsters. I really can't see what I'm filming here. But this is one of those big barges that... Pictures and talk do not do these things justice because uh, they look a couple miles long. With a big wake. Okay. I'm gonna help Bryce steer here. Some of them have uh, eight containers on them. Each container has to be 40 feet long. And, you know, <laughs> all that's getting pushed up river by a little barge, and it makes a pretty big wake. It's kind of intimidating to be right next to these things. There's barges everywhere. Left, right, center. We're trying to avoid uh, running into these things. I don't even think they could see us. And, um,. The wakes coming off these things are about six foot waves, so it's like we're back in those lakes. That's our first big barge we've passed. The Mississippi River is crazy. I mean, the traffic on this uh, on this thing is uh, is more than uh, more than we ever expected. Coming from uh, the last two rivers, where we hardly ever saw anybody out on the river. Now it's like uh, we're in rush hour. That thing's gotta be a quarter mile long, eh? We're like a little cork floating along next to these other ships. And that's what we're trying to navigate downriver against. They take up a good part of the river, as you can see. And we're, we're learning, but it's been a difficult process. It's kinda, they kinda own the river and you can't get in their way, cause, wow. Look, and the, they're extremely slow. They got. They have to be the slowest thing on the river, except for us. We're only about half the speed of them, so.
We're in Kimswick, Missouri right now, about an hour south of uh, St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, we, we seem to have run into another group of nice people that have taken us in. These Was guys, he another one? That came that's down Brian there? one, Brian yeah. two. And y'all are Canadians, eh? Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, exactly. hey. <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> what you talking about? Oh me. So where did where did you uh, where did you put in? Put in up in, uh, in just yet? north of uh, Sweetgrass, Montana, up on um, up, yeah, up yeah, in Alberta, yeah, yeah, right yeah. on the Milk River, and we flowed down the Milk River, got onto the Missouri just outside of the Fort Peck Dam, and been on the Missouri just until St. Louis, and. Now, now we're heading down the Mississippi. We're and you didn't run into any ice. Yes, they did. Oh, they rode did. icebergs. <laughs> we ran into a huge ice giant up by uh, Jefferson City. Uh, I think our general like uh, screening of people has changed. We we were once looking for like uh, the clean, proper, uh, outstanding citizen type, I guess. And now, if we see empty beer bottles and blasted off fireworks and you know, gun rounds all over the property. We figure those are our kind of people. So we uh, we found this place and these people seem just right up our alley. Typical river folk, gotta love them. Uh oh, we're on camera again. What are we doing here, Ray? What's up, brother? We're gonna do some more barbecue and St. Louis style barbecue. Somebody's shooting us. <laughs> well, we only have much left. We had about $500 worth for New Year's Eve. We're about down to the kids toys but we're doing our best to show our Canadian friends a good time. Now you don't want to hold these in your hand like this. That's a that good one would be better. Yeah! So we met a great group of people there and we decided to stay for a little while. But sure enough, I ended up a hostage at gunpoint and well, that, that's a story for another show. It got pretty hairy, but we'll leave that for next time. We're so far along on this journey now that most of our gear is falling apart. Our zippers are have been so full of sand that our tent doesn't even zip up anymore and it's still freezing out. I mean, it's not as cold as it was, but it's still pretty damn cold. So, we got to we got to get a tarp on the tent. We got to we got to make do with the everything wasting away, falling apart. This is usually what's supposed to be the back door of our tent. I've set up the part that you've all seen me set up before. And that's all our only working zipper left. The one over here, the usual front door is broken. See, it's got, it won't zip close no matter which way you go. It, we got too much sand in the zippers. I guess we didn't keep them clean enough. Cause this is the first part of our tent, the dome that we sleep in. After that, this fly goes over top and all the zippers on this fly are broken too. See, this one just rips right open. And then you do that and it's still open. So we've devised the system. We have a big tarp. I just slide that over the tent. And then I just kind of stick this end in to the ground with some extra tent pegs that we bought about a foot back from where it would usually have hooked in. Just stick that in there. Same thing from this one and in the middle. Kind of like, like, let's say that. Now, our extra paddles are coming in handy. Well, they also came in handy before. I just kind of measure somewhat off from center, slightly off from center. Sure. And now we put that down like that. Because we need a little, uh, dome way kind of to get set up and throw your shoes on stuff like that when it's raining so I figured something like this would work out. We got these big pegs here because we're always camping in sand now which is pretty nice. 
It's kind of like the beach except freezing. But getting warmer, we're on the Mississippi headed south, so it's getting warmer. Second paddle. I'm just gonna do the same thing. I kind of grab an eye on the tarp. Jab it in there, maybe. Something like that. We were using the old fly until it started to rain a lot and we decided we need a bigger tarp and more water protection. Find a place where I could stick that. There we go, yeah. Perfect. Stick that in there. And then I was looking at that and I thought that's pretty cool. I mean, check it out underneath. We got protection from the rain. We got a place to put our boots and stuff. More spacious than before. Maybe not slick looking, but definitely waterproof now. We've been passing bridges this whole time and uh, some of the bridges we're seeing right now over the Mississippi River are just magnificent. You know, I, uh, well, that's, that's what I build in my trade and we take a picture of every one. the lower Mississippi now and uh, it, it's incredible the, we, we didn't think this river could get any bigger but it, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and more and more ships keep coming up and down it I mean uh, starting to get nervous here with all this traffic I didn't think the Mississippi River could get any wider it used to be a mile now it looks like at least two or three miles wide this is the Ohio Mississippi River confluence that's Missouri. The point back there is Illinois, and over there is Kentucky. Up until now, the Mississippi River has been really wide. It's about to get a lot wider. Look at all these barges out here. start following the rules of the water or we might be squished. We're the only canoe out here and every single boater we run into with their huge V-Haul boats comes to make sure we're okay because they've never seen a canoe out here before. Um, the current, the wing walls, the barge traffic. I mean, maybe it would be a little safer had we done it in the summer, but it's January right now and we fall in, it's freezing water. The Mississippi is one of the most dangerous rivers in the world. The, the current in it is incredible. The river normally flows at around four or five miles an hour. And this thing has, you know, thousands and thousands of liters and gallons of water going through it. That you can get sucked in to the current and it'll take you five miles down the river. It would take you eight hours to swim across. So if we fall in, needless to say, you know, 15 minutes of hypothermia kills you. We're freaking dead. We've reached another confluence, another major confluence in the voyage. We've got on each side, we got Missouri, Kentucky, and Illinois. So it's a kind of an interesting spot. We have all three states uh, bordering at one spot. And uh, it's a beautiful day. Well, just enjoying a beautiful day here on the Mississippi River. Not really much to say about it, except it's a lot bigger and there's a whole bunch more traffic on it. Making it to the lower Mississippi River, it's uh, well, I mean, we're just we're almost tracking 
60 miles a day. You know, we're, we're kicking ass right now and it means we're gonna make it. Just like it did before, just ever since we've been on the Mississippi, it's just getting better and better. Uh, days are, we're tracking better, we're doing better, we're there. Our main concern and our main fear right now is still capsizing. I mean, with all these huge barges coming up and down the river, the wakes that they produce are, uh, are incredible. You know, you'll end up with six foot high waves. And not only the barges, there's just these buoys that's sticking up in the middle of the river. And I mean, a buoy might sound like a small thing, but in reality, it's about six foot tall and it weighs, you know, a couple hundred pounds. If we hit that at, at a good enough speed, we're, we're going in. And the Mississippi River, as much as you want to swim in that, and even if it's warm enough that we might not get hypothermia, you're not getting out of it for at least a mile. The current on that thing will just take you uh, right with it. And uh, plenty of people drown down there. So we have to be real careful. Okay, so say this is a bend in the Mississippi River. The barges are gonna take the wide side because that's where the current is and that's where the deepest channel is. Now, to keep the water flowing out to this way, the engineers among, along the river have created these wing walls. They're big, long, basically like peninsulas or something. Just basically a wall that sticks out made of rock and it keeps the current flowing in the main channel. So we have to stick out of the barge's lane, out of their lane here, and we have to go right close to these wing walls. Now the current around these wing walls, the current comes around and then it wraps around like this and it creates these like swirls in the water. And those swirls are enough to throw the boat right sideways. So you're coming down at about six miles an hour plus our paddling speed, so we could be doing about eight miles an hour. And then you hit this swirl that completely starts sending the water rushing backwards underneath you and it completely you lose control of the boat. You have to work your hardest to try and keep the boat safe. So this is another reason we capsize, is getting caught in one of these swirls or eddies around one of the wing walls. At one point, we actually went over one and it dropped our entire canoe into the middle of it and water started to come over the sides. And we had to paddle like hell to get out of it. It was uh, one of the scariest moments on the Mississippi. Take a shortcut uh, around an island on the Mississippi River to try and stay out of the wind. The winds are pretty heavy today. Uh, we didn't realize that uh, we're going to run into this uh, this huge wing wall that crosses the entire river, and uh, the water level is not high enough, so it's actually a pretty decent set of uh, rapids. There's a lot of water going through here, so it'll be a little bit tricky. But uh, we have no uh, we have no other choice but to shoot them because. We can't go back upstream, the current's too strong, and uh, well, we gotta make it to New Orleans, so we're gonna go hit these rapids and uh, see what happens. Yeah, we decided to take a shortcut because there's, uh, just like the Missouri River had, Mississippi has the same thing. There's runoffs, there's shortcuts, there's little creeks you can take, and usually you hit a little bit rougher water. But uh, rapids are fun, so let's shoot them. Now the cold's coming back and you know we were really hoping that now since we passed St. Louis and that we were getting into the southern United States that we were done with the cold. I mean as far as I know it doesn't snow in New Orleans and there's no reason that it should be this cold. I got some gloves. Our weather radios are calling for a frost again, and they're saying that the shorelines could freeze up. We don't need that. We can't, we can't walk out on the ice again. I'm tired of playing with the ice. According to the weather radios, children shouldn't be out on the ice. So it's a good thing we're not children. And uh, as far as animals that are normally kept outdoors, they should be, they should be brought indoors for shelter. So uh, 
Hopefully somebody will take pity on us and, and bring us animals indoors for some shelter. It's so freaking cold that my hand's actually freezing. I know Brian gave me shit the entire time about sticking my hand further down the paddle and digging deep, but you know what? This is getting a little ridiculous. How's that hand feeling, buddy? Well, this hand? I don't feel that hand anymore. There's a million things that could go wrong out here. If you get a headwind, you have the current going at six miles an hour this way, a 30 mile an hour headwind, that's what we were dealing with yesterday, and waves that are this close apart and like this high. They're constantly coming over into the canoe. We had to pull over twice to bilge water out of the canoe. It's below freezing, so if we don't bilge the water out quick enough, it freezes inside the canoe. Uh, yeah, very high risk of tipping, very cold. About three weeks left in the journey. This is the part where we die. Well, I hope not. Like, I really, I don't, I don't want to die, but if we're going to die anywhere on this trip, it would have been here. Or it will be here. Because this is, yeah. At this point, we just got to keep plowing ahead. We got to go, go, go. That's it. No choice. 